What's up everybody, Ian here with Redline. Uh, to anybody who watches this channel, you probably know that I'm restoring Project Redline, my 67 Nova build. I'm going as far with that thing as you could possibly go. No roof, floors, firewall, build the frame from scratch, you name it, I am digging deep on this one. To do a restoration like that, you got to have a lot of knick-knack tools to be able to do things that you need to do. Uh, and so for that reason, I wanted to share something with you guys. What I've got behind me, I've come to call for the last year and a half, my surgery cart. It's a collection of tools, some of them obvious, some of them not so obvious, that I use on a daily basis working on this car. And I just wanted to just do a little video and show you guys all my little collection of odds and end tools that I'm using that come in really handy. Let me uh, turn the camera around and I'll show you what I got. Like I said, some of this stuff is obvious, some not so much. Let's go over it. First, a quality respirator. These things are absolutely mandatory. There's no telling how much asbestos I'm kicking up off of this car as I'm grinding on it. A flashlight with a little, you know, angle head there that can change angles. Very, very handy. I'm sure you guys saw this coming. Uh, got a set of uh, body hammers. This is a really cheap, crappy set. I got to admit, I bought these because, frankly, I knew that I didn't know what I was doing. I figured I'd probably invest in some better body hammers later on. Uh, I did find that by grinding these cheap hammers down to a, a slope on the front uh, did make them more effective because good body hammers are not flat, which cheap ones are. With a set of body hammers, you're also going to find uh, dollies. I wish that these dollies were bigger. I'll probably buy a better set someday, but that's what I'm using right now, set of dollies. I keep handy about a three pound hammer. This thing is absolutely mandatory for knocking stuff out of that Nova. I also have a Woodward Fab shrinking hammer. This thing I have found to be one of the handier tools in my cart when you're trying to, you know, push a, 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 a an outward concave you know dent inward and you're wanting to shrink that metal a shrinking hammer is really important you know you can kind of have a look at the face of it there it does a great job of pulling that metal in as i hit it so those are my two favorite hammers i like to keep some 110 weight paper almost like cardboard stock paper handy and some shears for making templates Wire brushes, you really can't have enough of these things. I keep a little one and a big one. The little one tends to get into tight spaces better. The big one does a better job if the space is not tight. And then of course, you can't go wrong with just a handheld wire brush. I put my cell phone in here because, frankly, this is one of my handiest tools. Uh, it's got a flashlight on there, but more importantly, a camera. Take lots of pictures. Got to have that. Set of dikes come in really handy. Small set of pliers. Set of flat build pliers. Super handy. Uh, also, I like to use a masking tape. This allows me to draw a straight line on something. Just zoop, put it right on the middle, and then you have a straight line to cut. Masking tape, super handy. Utility knife, got to have that. I also like to keep handy a, uh, a Sharpie. Be aware, you don't want to use one of these Sharpies on body panels. That stuff will come up through your paint later. But when you're working on floor pans and bracketry and things like that that you don't care about, you know, uh, it's okay to use a Sharpie. Uh, always a good idea to have a, uh, you know, a chalk pencil handy. I've also got some grease pencils that I'll use when it comes time for body work. This little booger is something that you probably wouldn't have thought would be in this cart, and it's absolutely fantastic. This is a Roper Whitney number no. 5 sheet metal punch. You quickly change out the little dies in here. It allows you to punch metal and sheet metal very, very quickly, and it doesn't push the metal in like if you were to try and drill on it and push. Gotta have a tape measurer as well as a set of gloves. I do keep handy a set of uh, leather gloves for doing serious work. Gotta have those. Safety gear, got to have glasses. I oftentimes will use a full face mask over my glasses when I'm using uh, you know, a big grinder or something because stuff will come around these glasses. Get yourself some good earplugs. And then of course I've got a do-rag here that keeps all the sparks out of my hair. Next up, can't go wrong with a Sawzall with a metal cutting blade, absolutely mandatory. Something you probably wouldn't have thought you'd find in here, just a simple piece of one inch square tubing. I use it as a straight edge, very, very handy as a straight edge. Down here in the first drawer, 
Let's see here. Got a set of seam busters. We sell these on our website as well. This is the handiest tool that I didn't even know about when I started this project. Seam busters are absolutely mandatory trying to bust apart pieces of sheet metal. Punches. Have a look at all of the punches that I've got in here. Tons of punches. I've got some that I use for, you know, punching tiny little divots for drilling holes and then various sizes. These punches right here, these two big ones, frankly, are almost more chisels than anything, but I find them handy in certain situations when I need a big flat bill and then a great big punch with a huge end on it. These things are just mandatory. Here's something you wouldn't expect to find in here. This is another punch. Of course, I had to make this. This allows me to hit on something and put this, this surface right here up against a piece of metal, hit it with a hammer, and I have this great big flat area so that I'm not pushing in one tiny little location. Uh, I'm surprised you can't buy these things because that's one of the handiest tools that I've ever made. Here's another punch you probably didn't see coming. This is nothing more than a piece of probably three quarter inch solid round. This thing will allow me to get up inside places that I can't reach and start pushing on dents and whatnot. Really handy. I've got a couple of uh, C-clamps that I keep in here. I probably have 20 or 30 more of these things, but I keep a couple in my surgery cart. These things are just absolutely fantastic when you need another set of hands. Let's have a look at the next drawer. Down here, oh man, vice grips of every style that you could possibly think of. Vice grips, vice grips, these needle nose vice grips, those things are just remarkably handy. And then I've got some regular vice grips, gotta have those. These are something that I use quite a good bit, a set of duck build vice grips. These allow me to bend metal where I'm trying to, uh, you know, uh, put pressure over a wide surface, kind of like that punch from earlier. And I don't even know what you call these things. I picked them up from a uh, yard sale years ago because I thought they looked cool. Super handy when you need to wrap around something. Got a bunch of little sanding discs in here for my air tools. A great big pry bar. This is just your absolute best friend trying to get stuff apart. Got another pry bar slash punch. This thing has got a fantastic end on it, you know, a wedge. Use that thing all the time. These little ends right here are fantastic in uh, die grinders. We'll look at one of those in just a second. And then the last two items in this drawer, set of hole saws. These things are wonderful for killing spot welds when you're, you're, you're trying to go all the way through both pieces. And then, of course, I've got some, uh, some, some little spot weld cutters here, which are kind of like tiny hole saws. Uh, these things are just wonderful when you're trying to separate panels and you're not looking to destroy the back panel. Let's have a look over here at the side of my roll cart, at the business end of the roll cart. What do we got here? First, uh, this is like a little pit posse air tool storage rack that I mounted onto my roll cart. Absolutely love that thing. Here I've got just a standard die grinder. I wish this thing was reversible like all of my air tools. Gotta have that. One of those tools that you never really saw coming, right? This is a, a little very, very skinny, very long belt sander. This thing will get up in places that nothing else will. Pick this thing up years ago. I'll cry like a little sissy girl the day this thing breaks and I can't find another one. Air blow gun, pretty much self-explanatory. Love this little booger right here. You can see I've got a flap disc on the end of it. Uh, this is a cobalt brand. Been pretty displeased with the quality of this thing. It tends to leak air and you're just constantly screwing with this little adjuster right here. So uh, it works, but not happy with the cobalt brand. I picked up this little booger right here, I think from, uh, yeah, Central, Central Pneumatic. This is a Harbor Freight tool. Um, it works, but it really doesn't have any power at all. In retrospect, I wish I had gotten a better brand that had more power and was reversible. But nonetheless, a tool like this is just, you, you got to have one to reach up in places on a restoration like this. This is a tool you might not have seen coming. Uh, obviously it's a die grinder, but more importantly, on the end of this thing, you've got a little, uh, little carbide deburring end. I've got several different carbide tools. Those things right there are just amazing when you're trying to trim out tiny little places and kill a weld in, in, in really hard to reach spots. Uh, carbide deburring tool on a die grinder. Lastly, I've got one more air reciprocating saw. This is one of my best friends. This thing uh, is just great. It will get up in the tiny little spots where the great big uh, reciprocating saw won't. You've got to have one of these things. 
All right, last thing that I want to show you here on my surgery cart. Down below, have a look down here. I keep three die grinders. I have removed uh, the protective head off of all of these because I find that they really get in the way. I've removed the handle because they get in the way. I realize this makes them dangerous, but I do it anyway. So I keep three of these things that are identical. A uh, wire wheel on one, a flap wheel on the other, and then a very skinny, uh, you know, cutting wheel on this one right here. You know, it's, it's really great just to have all three of those plugged up at one time and be able to just switch out from one to the other without having to constantly switch discs. These things, I got them at Lowe's for like 25, 30 bucks a piece. Uh, that was money well spent. Well, that's everything that I keep here in my little surgery cart for building my 67 Nova. I'm kind of curious what you guys think that I've left out. What is missing from this that is something that I should just have on hand to reach and grab for constantly a great little tool that maybe I missed. Comment down below. Tell me what you think. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe if you want to see more. I'm out.